What is it about Japan that makes it so fascinating for so many people? Well, aside from being one of the coolest cultures in the world, where ninjas and drifting and crazy vending machines come from, yeah, it's only five dollars. I think it's the way they mix contemporary modern style and centuries-old tradition. Japanese culture has so many uniquely interesting aspects. You see it in the architecture, their fashion, their anime and manga, and of course, the food, specifically the ramen. I love ramen. It's why I came here. Join me, Savvy, as I travel from Sapporo to Fukuoka, sampling ramen from some of the most famous shops in Japan. Ohayou gozaimasu, YouTube. How are you guys doing? Welcome to my ultimate Japan ramen tour. I'm currently on day two of a nine-day trip. And right now I am in the Kanda district city. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I'm in Kanda. I stayed here last night. If you've been following along, I slept in a capsule hotel and that was pretty interesting. I I didn't sleep very well because just, you know, I'm inside of a strange environment outside of my, you know, the comfort of my own home. But the place was clean, super clean. Last night I hooked up with Brian from Ramen Adventures and he suggested that I pick up this book called uh, Best of the Best of Ramen. So first thing I'm going to do is head to a uh, bookstore called Mar Maruzen? Maruzen. I think it's like the Japanese version of a Barnes & Noble. And then from there I'm going to be headed up north towards Hakodate, which is apparently the birthplace of ramen. I think the bookstore is in the Tokyo station somewhere. Tokyo Station is gigantic. There has to be like a directory or guide or something down here that can point me in the right direction. Oh, aha, I see signs. Right there. This way. Nice. That's not gonna save me from coronavirus anyway, but I'm just trying to fit in. So I showed the lady at the cash register this and she said to check up on the second floor. So uh, we're on the right track. Oh, yes, I didn't got the one. Yes, bingo. It's amazing how on time these trains are. Oh look, an arcade! Stinks like 
smoke in here. Oh, <laughs> People are just playing video games in the middle of the day here. So wild. I love it. All right, I'm, I'm getting hungry. Let's go. Okay, I'm gonna do this on ramen with the big pork block, an egg, green onion. I love green onion. We'll go above the high level. One level red chili, and we'll go one level sancho. Yeah, so uh, I got the extra spice. I don't really know uh, how their spices compare to uh, like Thai spice or Cambodian spice so we'll see I mean I can eat pretty spicy but um, usually I end up paying for it later in the night uh, how many people sir Just one. okay pretty yes get thank you oh sorry you bite only they were very hot not yes. so fire yes. okay thank you for waiting yeah, double only wow thank you for waiting <laughs> oh my gosh that looks very spicy. Look at that big fat piece of pork, a mountain of onions and uh, peppers, and then a, uh, an egg right there. Put my bib on. Look at that soup. Mm. Mm. Oh man, holy. Mm. As I mentioned in my previous vlog, I will be doing a full review on all the ramen shops I visited in Japan. But a quick note about this shop. It is known as the place to get the hottest bowl of ramen in Tokyo. And let me tell you, it is absolutely no joke. Mm. Wow. Not only is it spicy, it's hot. Boiling hot, like lava hot. Look at this pork, oh my gosh, holy cow. This pork is just amazing, soft, and just the perfect accompaniment to this lava. It's not even soup, that's lava. That spice mix, especially the Sichuan, was so potent, I could barely formulate the words that I wanted to say. But in spite of all of that, in spite of how spicy it was, it was one of the tastiest bowls of ramen I had my entire trip. I'm like delirious right now. I'm just, I'm kind of in a daze. I feel like that devil spice is going to be coming back to haunt me later tonight. So after lunch, I made my way over to the train station, booked my seats on the bullet train, and made my way over to the platform that I thought I was supposed to be on. However, in my Sichuan-induced delirium, I made a little mistake. I somehow screwed up and got on the wrong train. I swear, I looked at the ticket and it said track 23, but maybe I read it incorrectly. I think I know how I screwed up. I was looking at the number after Hayabusa. Uh, it said 23, but that number after uh, Hayabusa is just the train number. And it can be on any track. So this one is going to be on track number 20. So uh, the next one only leaves at 2 o'clock. I have about an hour to kill. I guess I'll just do some exploring. Can't go too far because I only have an hour. No need to go too far because outside of almost every train station, you'll find these side streets filled with a variety of shops, arcades, and izakayas serving all kinds of grilled meats and veggies, and of course, alcoholic beverages. And all of it at a really great price. This big bottle is only five dollars here. That's a deal. That was a really neat little bar. If I had more time, I would have just hung out there and had some of those beef sticks. They had like all sorts of skewers. Uh, the guy next to me was eating beef tongue and it looked so good, but I got a train to catch. I literally have like 15 minutes to get there. And these trains are never late. But wait, before you hop on that train, head over to the train station bento shop and grab yourself a bento box. Trust me, 
Even though they sell food on the Shinkansen, you want a bento box. Not only is it delicious, they're super cute as well. It's all part of the bullet train experience. Traveling at 200 miles per hour, eating your bento box. The greatest thing about these bento boxes is that they're neatly packaged and includes everything you need to enjoy a well-rounded meal on your four-hour train ride. And then there's my favorite, the katsu sando. A breaded and fried pork cutlet sandwiched between two pieces of white bread. So simple, yet so delicious. I like the sandwiches. It's very good. I have about an hour yet till we arrive, so I'm gonna take a quick nap. I just reached Hakodate and man, it's a lot, a lot, a lot more cold up here. Ooh. I don't know why, but there is a strange lack of trash cans anywhere. I can never find a trash can. It's possibly my junk. I think this is the one I want over here. Yeah, track one. A part time. That's the one. Please push the button beside the door. We will be changing to another track. If you are standing, please hold on to the hand strap or rail. Please set your mobile phone to silent mode and refrain from talking on the phone. I gotta find my hotel now. I think I got about like, oh gosh, like a 15 minute walk, so. Oh look, a trash can. Ooh. Oh, that's gorgeous. I'm not really sure how big Hakodate is, but it doesn't seem like very busy, or at least not in this area. Ah, there it is, you see it? <laughs> that looks like a capsule hotel. Pay for the economy room and he actually upgraded me to the superior room. This is like a mansion compared to the room I stayed in last night. Not bad. I got a lock. I got a lock. Oh, I see. There's actually a. There's another bed up here, so two people can actually stay in here. Still pretty cozy. Oh. Oh yes. 
event. Pretty nice. Feels so luxurious. And I only paid 1800 yen for this. That's not even $20. I like it, man. Can't beat that. But um, all right, I'm gonna get settled in here and then uh, I'm gonna go out and explore. Mm, that's nice, this map here. That's where we're at. Looks like there's a fish market there. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Okay. These numbers correspond to the spots on the map there. So, ramen right there. That is ramen specialty store, the Hakadate Salt Ramen. That is what the Hakadate is known for, the salt ramen. And I actually have Ajisan here on my map of the places that I want to go visit. So, we'll have to go check this out. Hopefully it's still open. Let's see, number 11. Well, look at all these, eight, nine, 10, 11. So let's try one of these that are a little closer. I am really digging the vibe of this hotel. It's so, I don't even know what to call it. It's not hipster, but maybe it's a little hipster. This is the ramen shop that I wanted to check out, but um, they're closed. All right, let's, um, let's keep moving. That's it, that's the restaurant I was looking for. Interesting. I think I just stumbled onto a little, uh, little Izakaya Alley or something. This one's busy. These are all little small shops. Okay, fish. Hello. This is really neat. But I don't want seafood. I want ramen. Interesting. This is so cool. So it's like one, one bartender or cook guy in a little tiny bar. That's neat. That's really neat. Oh, it's this one here. Oh. I think, yeah, okay. This is the one. So um, I'm going with the uh, shio ramen with the butter. I have that butter. It's all up. Oh, yeah.
hit the spot, especially on a cold, snowy night like tonight. That, that ramen is perfect. I can see why this was a thing here in Hakodate. Uh, just a few tasting notes, that ramen wasn't a shio ramen, it was a miso ramen. Uh, Sapporo style. Corn, butter, bean sprouts, miso, that's definitely a Sapporo style. Tomorrow I'm gonna have to try and find some shio ramen because that's what Hakodate is known for. But for now, I think I'm gonna head back to the hotel and uh, just relax, maybe have a beer or something. I'll catch you guys in the next video. If you aren't a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Like now, do it now, so you don't forget. Herring roll. Herring roll, herring roll. Squid, squid cape, squid cape and the herring roll. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Most famous food I have that day, Matsumai's oh, wow. oh my goodness. Holy cow, that is huge. That is bigger than my head. Wow. Oh, they're filming a movie.